In this online lecture, we're going to talk about how organic acids and bases behave. And what we're going to see, key point, is that carboxylic acids, alcohols, and amines are organic molecules that can act as either acids or bases. So let me show you what I mean. Let's start here with the carboxylic acid. This part of the molecule right here is the carboxylic acid functional group. This particular carboxylic acid happens to be called acetic acid. Acetic acid has a pKa of roughly 4.76. And as a general rule, we should think that carboxylic acids in organic chemistry have a pKa of around 5. Now that's just a general rule of thumb. We'll see how other features of the molecule could make the pKa higher or less than 5 but we'll leave that for another online lecture. So if we have a carboxylic acid, and let's say he's going to behave in this case as an acid, then let's see what happens when we put him in a solution with this base. Now remember, in a previous online lecture, we learned two ways to think about acids and bases. There was the Bronsted and Lowry definition, which says acids are H plus donors, and then there was the Lewis definition that acids are electron acceptors. So for this reaction, what we would see is this movement right here. Notice the electrons on the base are being donated to the hydrogen on the acid. And remember, by definition, Lewis says a base is an electron donor. We'll learn in a later online lecture how to represent mechanisms by using these arrows. But for now, just accept the fact that when a carboxylic acid acts as an acid, he ends up looking like this, his conjugate base. And of course, as a side product, we end up getting water. And let's pay attention to the accounting here. What went where? Well, first of all, these electrons on the oxygen, they connected to the hydrogen and now are making this new green bond right here. That means this hydrogen on the carboxylic acid is now this hydrogen over here in the product. And the electrons right here between the oxygen and hydrogen, they jumped up on top of the oxygen, so here they are now existing as lone pair electrons. Take a few seconds and make these connections. Now, we said that carboxylic acids can also act as bases. And let's see how that looks. If he's going to play the role as the base, then this is playing the role as the acid. Now, keep in mind, in order for this to happen, the acid in this case has to be more acidic than the carboxylic acid. Or in other words, it should have a lower pKa. If that's the case, then the carboxylic acid behaves as a base, and this is the connections that we're going to make here. We end up with this as a product. The key point here is that when the carboxylic acid acts as a base, it's the oxygen that's doubly bonded to the carbon that gets protonated, as we can see here. And as a side product, in this case, we would get H2O. And again, let's look at the accounting here. These electrons on the oxygen of the carboxylic acid are these electrons right here in this bond, which makes this hydrogen on the acid this hydrogen right here. And the electrons in the acid here in the red box, they jumped up on top of the oxygen, so now they're here existing as a lone pair of electrons. So there it is, a carboxylic acid behaving like a base. And just in case, the pKa of our product here, the conjugate acid here, is negative 6.1. And think about what that means. That means that this molecule is very acidic. So this is the behavior of a carboxylic acid. Now let's look at another organic molecule here. In this case, this is called an alcohol. And alcohols always have what's called an OH group. For this particular example, this molecule is called methyl alcohol. And to give you an idea of how acidic alcohols are, they have a pKa of around 15.5, which means they're relatively weak acids. So let's look at how they behave. First, let's see how an alcohol would behave as an acid with a base. These are the connections that we would make for this reaction. We would end up with this as a conjugate base. 
Again, the important point here is notice our alcohol has lost its hydrogen, so now he's CH3O minus. And let's look at the side product here. We also get H2O. And also, let's look at the accounting. Who went where? These electrons right here now make up this bond right here. And that means this hydrogen right here on the alcohol is now this hydrogen over here. And the electrons in the alcohol right here between the O and H jumped up on top of the oxygen. So now they make up this lone pair right here. However, since alcohols are weak acids, they can also behave as weak bases. So if we reacted this alcohol with a particular strong acid, we would get these connections right here. We end up with this as a result of the alcohol. Notice he simply has one extra proton. And as a side product, again, we get the water. And the accounting here is simply these electrons now make up this bond right here because this hydrogen here in the acid is now this hydrogen attached to the alcohol. And the electrons here in the red box, they jumped up on top of the oxygen, again creating this lone pair of electrons. So this is an alcohol behaving as a base. And just to let you know here, our conjugate acid has a pKa of around negative 2.5. And think about why that's so here. We just said that alcohols are weak bases. That means the conjugate acid should be strong. And sure enough, having a pKa of negative 2.5 makes you a strong acid. Now let's look at amines. These can also act as acids and bases. All amines have this functional group, an NH2, or sometimes an NR2 which we'll talk about in another online lecture. This particular amine is called methyl amine. These have a pKa of around 40, which means, obviously, they're extremely weak acids. In fact, amines behave more so as bases than they do acids. But they can play both roles. Let's make sure we see both roles here. Here's the amine acting as an acid with a particular base our connections would look like this. The amine then turns into this conjugate base right here. Notice simply one of his hydrogens has been removed. And as a side product, we get the H2O again. And our accounting in this case, these two electrons right here became this bond right here. And then that means this hydrogen of the amine is now this hydrogen on the water. And the electrons between the N and the H, they jumped up on top of the nitrogen. So there they are right here, existing as a lone pair of electrons. However, more often the case is an amine acting as a base. Let's see what happens here. These are the connections that we would make in this particular case. Notice the amine acting as a base turns into his conjugate acid. He has that extra proton attached to the nitrogen. And again, as a side product, we're getting the H2O. And just to make sure you got this, this is where everybody ends up. And just in case here, our conjugate acid happens to have a pKa of 10.7. So let's look at a sample problem here. Make sure you have the ability to pull this off. Provide the conjugate acid for each of the following. For that first molecule, notice it's an amine. So to create his conjugate acid, we add an H. And now we know exactly where to add that H. It simply adds to the nitrogen. That gives us NH3+, meaning the nitrogen has a positive formal charge now. Let's do the same thing with the carboxylic acid on the right. Remember, if we're going to determine his conjugate acid, we need to add a proton to him. The question is, where will it add? We saw before that the H adds simply to the oxygen that's involved in the double bond specifically. So that means this is going to be our conjugate acid, and this is our answer. So what have we learned here? Key points. We saw that carboxylic acids, alcohols, and amines are organic molecules that can act as acid and or bases.